user objects and groups. We took a look at address objects and groups, service objects and groups, and application objects and groups, and we cannot finish section two by discussing user objects and groups, which are going to be very important on your firewall security policies. You want to set policies based on user accounts. You want to specify which groups will be allowed to reach XYZ application, XYZ destination on your security policy. So you want to make sure that you classify your users into groups. And then you can also import LDAP groups, meaning if you have in an environment where you're running directory authentication based services, such as Active Directory, you're going to be able to integrate that to the Palo Alto and do a remote uh, user lookup from your AD environment. So if you have a couple of uh, groups inside your Active Directory environment, you can apply those groups onto your firewall policies. And for example, if you want to put your staff specific, for example, HR or accounting, and to a specific group that will be allowing more access than regular HR or non-accounting users, a preferred policy or a provide them more access onto the destination. So if you have a local user that not necessarily it's AD integrated, meaning that either it's going to be a temporary user, you don't want to allocate a, an AD account to this user, or simply you don't want to have them a part of AD, you can still configure a local user on the Palo Alto and still apply policies for that particular user. And we're going to take advantage by doing that, uh, implementing, for example, Capture Portal. So Capture Portal is a great way to enforce or police web filtering or web access to a specific destination by asking the user to input his username and password. And if the user is, doesn't have an account on the group that is allowed onto the policy, they're not going to be able to go and access that but in this case, we're going to configure those user objects and groups. In another section, we're going to actually configure that capture portal. But this is a great start so you can understand how can you take advantage of user objects and groups. Okay, so as you can see on the slide, we're going to look at creating local user objects. We're going to make remote user objects based on LDAP integration. So we're going to integrate with Active Directory and we're going to use those objects that were created in Active Directory and use them on our file policies. And finally, we're going to nest users into groups. So if you have a particular group that will have more access than another group, you can create uh, separate policies, one for a group that has full access and one that does not have that. Alrighty, so let's begin. Okay, so once we log in onto the Palo Alto, we're going to click on device. We're going to go into the local user database, and this is where we're going to configure local users on your Palo Alto. Those are users that are not necessarily in your AD or directory services server or forest. Basically, local users that you still want to provide them access to specific resources, but you know everything is going to be configured um, in a tight security policy, which you're going to add that user group onto the policy and provide them access to a, a specific resource. So let's go ahead and click on users. We're going to click on add. We're going to type this username. So let's create two users. One user will have more access than the other one. So let's call privilege user one. Or in this case, let's call it prefer user. Okay, let's set up a quick password. Let's enable that account. And then let's make the other one restricted. Also, let's make a password. Okay. So we just made two users. One user is a preferred user. The other one is a restricted user. This preferred user is gonna be able to go to basically every single website. This second user, which is restricted, basically following the internet usage policy in the company, this guy will be assigned a restricted user account. So his account will be restricted user. So now we need to make two local user groups. Uh, one. Every single user that is going to be a preferred user, we're going to add that into that preferred group. And then every single user that is behaving badly is not actually following rules in your environment. You're going to add that into your restricted group. So let's make those two user groups. Start with preferred group. And then let's add that user that it's our preferred user. Any user that is inside this group will be preferred. Or in this case, will be allowed to go to every single website. Okay. Now let's make another group. And this case will be a restricted group. And now we're going to add that restricted user. Okay. So now we have the local users. So those are two users that are just local users. They're not actually in my LDAP environment. They're just local users on the firewall. And then we created local user groups, 
meaning that those are groups for all my local users. So again, if I am not integrating this with LDAP, I just need some local users. I don't really need to integrate it to AD. This is the way that I will be doing. Once I have that group, I can make a policy and say, for example, source preferred group. So in this case, we're gonna say anyone from an IP standpoint. So if we go to policies, and let's say, for example, and so in section three, we're gonna talk about security policies, but in this case, I'm just gonna show you this on a quick demonstration. So we're gonna click on add, and then once we click add, we're gonna type the name of the rule. In this case, it's gonna be preferred access to internet. And then we're gonna say source coming from our end side of the network, any source address from the end side. But in this case, we're gonna select that user group. So let's go ahead and select that preferred group. So any user inside that preferred group is gonna be matching against this policy. If I am not in that group, I am not gonna be a match against this policy. I will need to follow my policy order in the Palo Alto. And then destination, we're gonna say outside and then anything on the outside. And by the way, this is just a test. I'm not actually saying that this is the right way to do this particular policy, but for this demonstration, I just wanna show you how it's done. And then we'll basically allow, we'll click okay. So now you can see that I have a preferred access group to the internet. Everyone from the inside that matches inside this user group is gonna be able to the outside, every single website. And then once we finish with this, we can then do the other one for the deny. So we're gonna click on add, and then we're gonna do the deny. In this case, we're gonna do this restricted, okay? And then in this case, the same zone because they're coming from the inside. Only difference, we're gonna add that restricted group as our user coming from the source. Destination, sending that restricted group to the outside, but then I am only allowing them to go to a.a.a.a. Meaning that I am only allowing that particular group to hit that destination. Then if I am not matching any other rule below that, then I'm basically gonna be matched against the global deny, which is gonna drop the traffic. And then application service any, and then we're gonna allow. So now this restricted group is only able to hit that particular destination. And you can do this for any type of traffic. And not necessarily is this internet, I'm just giving that as an option. But for example, if you have a set of web applications that are sitting on your DMC and you don't want that restricted group to hit that, this is the way you do it. You just allow uh, the preferred group to every single destination or the list of services or servers that you have on your DMC. And then you put a rule for the restricted groups so they don't go anywhere. And again, I will be discussing security policies in a more detailed manner. So for this case, I'm just showing how to use local users and groups. Okay, so once done, the last thing, obviously, let's commit. Okay, everyone, so we just took a look at making some user objects and groups in the local Palo Alto database. Now we're going to do LDAP authentication and we're going to work with remote users and groups.